Hey guys, today's video is going to be all about my top five regrets from high school so that hopefully you can learn from my mistakes and not have to learn them the hard way like I did. And then after that, I'll be going over five things that I'm glad I did that I don't regret during my four years in high school. I guess I technically went through three and a half years in high school because my second semester senior year has been... By the way, this video is sponsored by the College Board Opportunity Scholarships, which I will talk about later on in the video. This video is going to be pretty chilling, me just sitting here talking to you, but I'll try to figure out a way to work in an animation of a hamster drawing somewhere. Coming in at number five on the regrets list, is putting off having fun until later. I go to a high school that's pretty competitive. Almost everybody goes on to higher education in some form, whether that be community college, four-year college, or a trade school. And as a result, we are all pretty future-oriented. The culture is very focused on doing well, getting the grades in high school, so that you can get into a good school and be successful in the future. And obviously there's nothing wrong with getting good grades and wanting to succeed and being ambitious. That's something that I would definitely encourage you to do. But once it crosses a certain threshold, it goes from plan ahead and do things now that your future self will be happy for, to you have to grind and suffer for three and a half years in order to be able to finally relax once college apps are no longer hanging over your head. There's a certain line between work hard now to make your future self grateful without absolutely wrecking yourself and working way too hard right now and putting yourself through misery just for some of that hope that maybe future self will be happier with the work that you put in. But that's really not a healthy way to live life as I've come to realize because life is meant to be enjoyed while you're living it. Don't live every day like it's your last because that's a horrible like idea for your financial and physical health. But you do have to take at least a little bit of time out of your weeks and months to just enjoy living. I definitely did fall victim to just working and not making myself take time off to just have fun. Obviously, I'm not saying I never ever enjoyed my high school experience, but I did a lot of putting off things that I might have enjoyed and skipping out on spontaneous opportunities or hanging out with friends. And now, well, I kind of regret that, especially because I literally cannot do those things now. Even if you're not in this particular situation being a senior right now, it's helpful to remember that having fun with your friends in high school it's not something that lasts forever and you should take advantage of it while you can instead of putting way too much time and focus on extracurriculars. Regret number four is not doing enough research about colleges before actually applying and you know trying to decide where I'm going to spend the next four years of my life and get my education and all that stuff. My main problem with doing research was that I was so indecisive that I kept putting it off and putting it off and I just never ended up with enough time to properly formulate my list in a fully thought out manner. Like I thought about it, I really did, but I didn't give myself enough time to fully think it through. I pretty much formed my entire college list in like June before my senior year, which is definitely not enough time. Like start like second semester junior year. If you are an overthinker and perfectionist like me, indecision is so, so paralyzing. And I began to use it as an excuse for not taking action. Like, oh, I don't know what I want to major in. So obviously I can't do the kind of research that depends on the ranking of a school within a field. But like, even if you don't know, like, I'm going to study this exact major at this exact location and then go into this exact field. But in the end, it's really better to just like try to get moving a little bit. I definitely should have tried to approximate what I wanted and given it my best shot instead of just being like, oop, well, I don't know. So I guess I just won't answer this question. Like if you don't know the answer on a test, you might as well guess, right? And I like 50% knew an answer. So I should have just guessed the odds are in my favor. Anyways, all of that indecision just resulted in me spending way too little time formulating my college list and definitely not doing enough research on each individual school. I don't regret all of the schools I applied to, but there are a few schools that I wish I hadn't applied to because I wasted way too much application fees and time spent writing essays and self-esteem lost from reading rejection letters for schools that I didn't really care that much about in the end. And conversely, there are a couple schools out there that I 
finally heard about and researched a little bit after I had already submitted all of my applications and the deadlines were over. And then my brain was like, oh, maybe that'll be a good option based on what you know about yourself right now, finally. In the end, I think it all turned out okay because I'm going to attend a school that I really like and I'm really excited about. 10 out of 10, what apply again? But maybe I could have saved myself some money and energy while I was on my way here. My regret number three is not applying to scholarships. I was just really lazy. I don't really have a good excuse for it. For example, I really wish I had applied to the UCLA Alumni Scholarship. It really didn't take that much effort. It was like two essays, and I could have just recycled one of my supplemental essays from another college application. But I just rationalized it in my head because I thought I wasn't going to get into UCLA anyways, so what was the point? But Really, it wouldn't have been that hard. There are so many opportunities out there that could have helped me, one, save some money on my college education, and two, maybe win some honors and awards and like prestigious things, I guess. I don't really know. I probably should and I wish I did know more about this stuff. But at that point, after I had finished all of my college essays and put in all this work in applications and schoolwork, I was just getting kind of tired and lazy. But it would have done me well to realize that one, scholarship applications don't actually take that much effort. You just send in your scores and GPA and transcript and all that stuff. And then I could just recycle a bunch of my supplemental essays from other college applications. So if you are an underclassman or a junior and you haven't gone through this process yet, I definitely recommend you at least shoot your shot at a couple of scholarships. You never know what's gonna happen. And it really does not take that much effort. Now, speaking of scholarships, today's video is sponsored by the College Board Opportunity Scholarships, which is actually a series of six different micro scholarships that incentivize you to take certain steps along your journey to applying for college. The six steps are pretty much things that you'll already be doing anyways, so you might as well participate in a little scholarship winning action while you're at it. The way this works is once you complete each step and track it down in your College Board account, you get an entry into each month's prize drawing. There's a separate drawing for every single step, and then once you've finished all six of them, there's a last one that's worth the most for, you know, people who have finished all six steps. The Opportunity Scholarship System awards about 4,000 students with a total of $5 million in scholarships, which range in amount from $500 to $40,000. Now, this is open to everyone regardless of your family income, and I really appreciate that in this scholarship system, half of the scholarships, which amounts to around $2 million, is reserved for people whose family income is less than $60,000. You know, that way it helps to ensure that people who need it the most will get the best benefits out of the scholarship money. If this sounds like something you'd be interested in, it's very easy to get started right from the safety and comfort of your own home. You can visit the link in the description for more information. And the first step is to start with step number one, creating your college list. And this will enter you into the first drawing for $500. I mentioned earlier that I kind of put off a lot of scholarship applications because they required a marginal amount of extra work. And this one basically doesn't take any extra work besides signing up for it. This just incentivizes a bunch of different steps that I had already done in my process to apply for college and that most people will be doing as well. If you're interested in this program, be sure to check out the link in the description. All right, and now let's continue. Regret number two is not taking AP Lang. To me, that class in particular just represents the issues I had with being afraid to challenge myself. So I wish I had taken that class and I also wish I had challenged myself a little bit more throughout my high school experience. I think in sophomore year, I definitely did that. I took the hardest course load available at my high school for sophomores, and I struggled quite a bit at the beginning of the year, but I grew a lot through it. The same happened when I challenged myself with joining long distance running in sophomore year, and I struggled, and then I got through it. But after sophomore year, I got scared of the struggle for some reason, even though looking back, I have always been able to rise to the challenge or at least get through it and learn from my mistakes. And besides taking hard classes and trying new extracurriculars, I also wish I had just entered into more pursuits that I thought I'd probably fail at. Whether that be applying for a scholarship or award that I think I have no business winning, or applying for an internship or summer research program camp thing that I was certain I'd be rejected from. 
I wish I hadn't done so much, oh, I'll only do this thing if I'm sure I'll succeed at it, and more, I don't think I can succeed at that, but maybe I'll stretch myself and see where it ends up going. On one hand, it's good to only expose yourself to a healthy level of challenge. Like, don't dive in way too deep into something you're not ready for, because you'll probably drown. But on the other hand, I was definitely not challenging myself enough at all. I just don't like that feeling that I had stagnated quite a bit in the middle of my high school years, and now I'm working to push through it, and I'll definitely be putting myself in challenging situations in college. My number one regret is a pretty big one that I feel like overarched my entire series of regrets that I just discussed. And that is that I wish I hadn't overcommitted and then burned myself out. Now, I'm not saying I didn't enjoy everything that I got myself involved in academically and outside of class, but too much of a good thing can become a bad thing. I had so many great things in my life, but they were adding up to an unreasonable, physically, humanly impossible amount of work and time that really messed up my mental stability. It's of course great to be involved in a lot of things and occupy your time and mind with things that you'll benefit from, but I also do think that I needed a lot more free time and just boredom. Some of my best creative efforts have come out of being bored and just having nothing to do and having to come up with something to fill my time. Like this YouTube channel. I made this because I was really bored in my freshman year and I thought maybe it'll be a fun thing and now look where we are now. I don't know if this is like biologically and psychologically a sound analogy, but to me it's kind of like letting the fields fallow, an agricultural concept I guess, of letting the fields relax and just have some time off for nutrients to seep back into the soil. That way the next time you plant crops there, the crops will grow well. I'm not a farmer, I'm sorry if I explained that wrong, but I do feel like your brain kind of needs a similar thing, to just let it relax and do nothing, so that cool new ideas and inspiration and energy will come from it. And besides that whole mental energy and creativity aspect of it, I also think I just needed more time, more hours in a day, to explore and to try new things and to set forth new efforts instead of constantly staying stuck in the same things that I had overcommitted myself to. Hello, it's me editing. Same shirt for that awesome continuity. And I just wanted to add that by not giving myself enough time to relax and recover all of my energy and creativity, not only did it prohibit me from properly exploring new interests and new ventures, but I also didn't get to actually get 100% good and committed at the things I was doing. Like you could probably tell that in the middle of junior year my YouTube videos were not that great, not that inspired, not that 100% effort, because I had burnt myself out. So, you know, if you want to be good at the things you're already doing, overcommitting is also not a great option. <laughs> Speaking from someone who did it wrong. I know we all want to be hustling all the time, but you really do need some time off in order to be actually working at your best when you are working. So now that we've gone through those five somewhat saddening things that I wish I had not done, let's talk about five things that I am glad that I did. One thing that I definitely don't regret is living my own life just for myself and not tailoring my entire life to college applications. Don't limit what you do in high school just to try to make yourself look better on college applications. We all know that there are certain things to do and certain ways to live your life that are better for gaming the college application system. For example, having a very focused, narrow profile for a particular field or subject that shows a lot of like passion in that area is supposed to be better for college applications. My application profile was kind of a mess. I didn't really have a focus. I just spent my high school years exploring my pretty disparate interests. I wouldn't say I messed around, but I kind of did what I wanted without trying to plan it out like, will this result in a cool thing that I can list on my extracurricular tab? I'm glad I took my time in high school to explore so many of my very unrelated interests instead of trying to back myself into a narrow corner, a narrow field early on in my life. I don't know what I would have done if I hadn't been able to try all these things and determine what I enjoy but probably won't try to make a job out of and what I enjoy and might want to pursue further expertise in 
for a career field. The second thing I'm really glad I did is learning how to read and type very, very quickly. I've always been a pretty avid reader, and as a result, I have a lot of practice with reading very, very quickly. Also, at my elementary school, we had those type to learn games that we did really often, and I got pretty darn good at typing. I also played piano when I was little, so that might have been helpful in learning how to type quite quickly. But yeah, I'm a freaking fast typer and a freaking fast reader, and these are two really useful skills for academics. For example, with fast reading, it's a lot easier for me to get through standardized testing where time pressure might be an issue, and I can get through my readings for class, like textbook notes and assigned readings, pretty fast. As for typing quickly, it's really useful for doing online classwork and writing papers really, really fast, and for taking notes in a fast-paced lecture where the teacher is just zooming through those slides. Also, I can dominate people in Type Racer. The third thing I'm glad I did is refine my study skills. And that's something I've been encouraged to do because I make this study advice channel. There's something about giving advice to other people that really forces you to actually know what you're doing in the first place. So I've learned a lot of new study skills and methods and tips and techniques and all of those cool buzzwords about how to actually study by doing research for this channel and trying to reflect on my own experience and formulate them into actually actionable tips. This has forced me to think about what actually works best for me and do a ton of research about new methods that I can try out and see if they click with my learning style. While I do admit I've probably gotten lucky genetically because my parents are both super smart, so I probably inherited a little bit of that natural intelligence, I truly don't believe that I've just been coasting by on my natural intelligence. I guess it was kind of lucky that I'm not one of the like super, super smart gifted children who has been able to coast by through high school on their own natural intelligence. Instead I've like hit my cap of where I can get to just on natural intelligence alone, and I've been forced to actually learn my study skills here in high school where things are a little bit easier, it's a little bit easier to test the waters with your study skills without messing up too hard, and this will be useful in college and beyond. The fourth thing I'm glad I did is figure out how to earn money. I recognize that I am privileged in such a way that I did not have to work part-time to sustain my family during my high school years. All of the money I've earned, my parents have allowed me to keep under my own name, which I'm super grateful for. The main ways I have gotten that coin is one, through YouTube, the platform you're watching right now, and through interning over the summer. The two main reasons that I'm glad that I did this was one, I can learn a lot about personal finance because I actually do have some money that I need to learn how to manage. Also, I'm just really glad I have those savings for college and adulthood and beyond. Never hurts to have extra money saved up, especially when you're super young and compound interest is most definitely in your favor. If you'd like to hear more about like personal finance, I guess, I might make a video about that. Let me know if you'd be interested. I'll put a poll in the cards over here. The fifth thing that I definitely don't regret is that I have developed a bunch of habits that will help me stay healthy throughout the rest of my adult life. I have a pretty darn good sleep schedule. I am one of those psychopaths who can get up at 6.30 without an alarm. I just like knock out at 10.30 and then I wake up naturally at 6.30. I don't exactly know how I did this, but my brain works like this, so I'm glad it figured itself out like that. I've also gotten into the habit of exercising and eating pretty decently as a result of sports. I too used to hate running, but then I did long distance running for three years in high school, and now I can't live without it. Hopefully that'll be good for me in my long-term future health as far as preventing like cardiovascular disease, but my knees are already busted, so we'll see how the rest of my joints hold up as I get old. I don't know who taught me this, but I freaking love bland food, which is, probably going to be good for my nutritional habits as I grow up. I really love plain rice and plain noodles. Bitter tea with no sweeteners in it, yes, that is my favorite. Black coffee, that's where it's at. I'm just a dry sandy freak who likes bland food, but it'll be hopefully good for my long-term health. I hope you found this video helpful, and if you would like to share your own life advice, please do share that in the comments below. I also upload new videos every Monday, and my Instagram where I post photos of my notes and bullet journal is at studyquill. 
See you next time. 